G'day, how you going? Hey, Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me video channel this morning. It's morning time here in Australia. Beautiful, nice and cool in the morning. Just get some sizes up there on the canvas panel before we get started. They're in centimetres and inches. And I'll also get some colours going up the screen as well. Now, this is a picture I designed on my iPhone. No, not my iPhone, on my iPad. And um, I'm going to show you what the picture looks like, just so as you get an idea how it's going to change from a reference. I like using the iPad because it gives me the opportunity to lay out colours instead of doing a painting as an example. I can lay out colours in the Procreate program on my iPad and see what's going to work, mix it and change it up till I'm happy with it, then I know exactly what I'm going to put on my canvas. Because I will tell you one thing, beginners, if you don't know what you're going to paint and you're standing here and you're all ready to paint and you don't know what you're going to do, it's bloody frustrating, eh? And it starts turning into nothing and nonsense and you don't want that. The best thing is to know what you're going to paint and then when you're standing here knowing that, oh my God, the magic just happens and the bullshit that that canvas starts to possess is amazing. So get on over here and let's get right into it, all right? So this is what I've designed on my iPad there. I was looking for some kind of stormy sky. No. And um, some afternoon sun setting, a bit of a field or a farmland, some trees in the distance there. And probably, you know, in the afternoon, there's no rain, but there's a bit of a crackle of lightning in the sky. So what I want to do, I'm going to do the sky with Retarda and uh, Flow White paint, but I don't want that underneath the other paint. So I'm going to put roughly my horizon line about there where I can tape it. All right. And that distance flock of trees, we'll call them a flock. So there's half of the painting. Uh, we'll come a bit beyond half. And I want a flock of trees. Now don't do them all the way up here because you're far away away and they're not that bloody big. Do them... Try and get, get them within perspective. So within here, I'm going to try and do a flock of trees in the distance there. Where did I come? Somewhere around there. And we'll just stop there. Okay. All right. I've got some student paint. It's a soft bodied craft paint, poster paint. I call it flow white because it feels like it can flow. So I just call it flow white. All right. And I've just got a simple, no fuss not expensive it was like two bucks at the hardware store a synthetic two inch brush and it's quite narrow it's it's good it's like a big flat i use it like a big flat and it's good for getting the paint on with no mucking around it just gets right into it so we'll get our sky mapped in with this i want to crisscross it within the the canvas now i just need to go roughly to the trees there i don't have to go all the way there because i found Years ago, I used to paint the whole lot with this retarded white paint. And then when I'm trying to paint something on top of it after I've dried it, it can act a bit muddy, clammy and rubbery and start lifting up your paint you're trying to put on and it frustrates the buggery out of you. So I'm not doing that as much anymore. There's my horizon line about there. So we've virtually mapped all this, crisscrossed it into the canvas, got it on there. So we've got a nice white retarded surface with soft body paint ready to put a beautiful sky in. Okay, and we'll just stroke it across like that so it's nice and neat. Now I've just wiped my brush, I haven't washed it. I've got some Indian yellow, phalo blue and quinacridone magenta. I just want a little bit of this in this yellow just to create that orange, a little bit of orange. All right, now there's my horizon line. Now I I don't really want to do a big ball of this here. If anything, it's going across the horizon line. So I want to um, get it here. This tape there, I bought a tape, it was crap, it doesn't even stick. <laughs> get that there. Now I'm slicing it into that, coming across there. I'm breaking it up like that. I'm massaging it into that white. 
probably come up about there. Just about like that, okay. So what I've done, once I finish stroking it, I'll just explain to you what was in my mind. All right, I'll, look at that. I'm taking time using the tip, very soft, and stroking that. Now I've left a scallop here just so I can integrate the other colour of this magenta. So I'm, I've left that yellow in there. It doesn't matter because it's going to turn a bit orange. So I'll get some of this in there now. And this is going to separate the blue from that yellow so it will not turn green in the sky. Heavy and flick it in, let it wear away. That's it. Now let's get this all traced up there as well, just like that, where the blue is going to come into it. Now, if anything, I've done like scoops like this, so it looks like we're looking down in deep into that sky. There we go. Now we'll get rid of, that's just the horizon, but I'm gonna try and use this brush to smooth that across like that, yes. See, it's down in the horizon, so it's long. See, long and flat. Okay, and the higher my sky gets, it can come pillowy and wavy like that. Now I will wash this brush, just so we won't get any green happening when we add our blue. My goodness, I put a lot of blue on the palette, didn't I? Okay, now I want to get, I'll start at the top first. I'll get the blue on its own at the top. Get to that red, just so I'm not contaminating, it's still all blue, okay. Now I'll pick up some more blue. Now I'll start slicing it within that quinacridone magenta, just like this. Doesn't matter if it turns a bit purpley. Now we'll start slicing it within that red. Mush it all together. There we go. I'll try and get a bit more dark at the top. Yeah, beautiful. Bit more darker areas here like that, give it that dark stormy look. Now I'm gonna stroke it lightly. Not too much, because I've gotta get the blending brush and blend all this together. Okay, I'm happy with the bottom. I'm not gonna to touch that. I just wanna get these colors here blended. Now I've got this brush and I've got a rag to constantly wipe the build up as I'm blending, okay? So we'll get all this blended and wipe it with the rag as we go. Now it's picking up the blue and putting it all into that red. I don't want that to happen. So we'll get in the red and we'll just dance the edges of the red into the blue. Without killing too much of it. That's okay. Then we can come into the blue and just softly. If anything, I'm going from left, I'm, I'm twisting the brush, but if anything, my, the main strength is in left and right movements. There we go. Now we'll put some clouds in there. That's a good base of a sky to add some nice clouds. Before I get the clouds on, I'll just grab a pouncer and some of the titanium white and we'll get an element of the sun in the sky as well. That way the clouds can be in front of it if anything. And I'll probably put it about here. So I'm just going to get it on there, give it a bit of a twist. It's got beautiful sky colours hovering over that. How's that looking in there? That's it. I'll give it a bit of a dim around the edge a bit, just so it's not in focus. That's it. Now I want to pick up a fan brush. This is a hog bristle, just a smaller type, not a tiny one, but a, probably a medium to small type. I want to get some clouds on the horizon line. My horizon line's pretty much there, so I'll come up about here, just so I've got something to blend down within that yellow. Now, I'm, I'm not worried about what's happening under here. I'm worried about how I'm shaping the top of my cloud. Uh, I want something about there, pillowing up. There, come down a bit. 
turn my brush around, pick up some more white, pick up some more off there. That'll do. Come to a point like I normally do. Now what I want to do is just blend from about halfway down to the horizon line. But I will tickle the tops a little bit first just to manipulate it. Not much, just tenderly. Tenderly, tenderly. That's it. Now I'll get the brush lengthways and start pulling that down within to the horizon line. There we go. Nice. Now I picked up a bigger fan brush with some white paint and I'm looking at my, I want something, see these clouds here, we can join the red and the blue together where you feel you want to weld the two colours together. Now grab your blending brush and a towel, something give this turmoil within the sky lovely turmoil like that okay I call it turmoil bit of a bum bit of a bottom it's picking up the red it's picking up the blues <laughs> twist it up there like that look at that you probably don't even need to put grey in this well you don't actually because it's picking up the reds and the blues all that sunlit colours there Soften that down a bit as well. Okay, there's a cloud there. A bit scratchy there, I'll get rid of that. Okay, let's get something here and come over our head. Over our head, right off the page there. Grab your blending brush. Now these ones have bums on them. Bums, you don't know what a bum, it's the bottom of a cloud. So you virtually blend it flat, like that, see what I just did? And then you blending it, wiping your brush, grab another brush, that one's dirty, got another one here, now here's another opportunity for another bum right there, pull it, pull it across and let the top smear and turmoil up, like that, it's getting a bit dry so I'm kind of rushing it now, get some more over here, we can probably just do some like this, just like that, And get the bum on it. Get the bum on it just like that, see? Probably put some here. Blend the bum on it and get the top up. There we go. How's that looking in the monitor? That's okay. I want something out here. Now grabbing your small fan brush, I'll just put something in front of the sun there, just like that. I'm not going to blend this, I'll just do it with this brush. Just twisting it there. There we go. One there, and maybe one here. Coming in front of that one. These add um, depth to your painting when you're looking at it, I feel. Uh, maybe one about here. Skinny and then come and fat. Just like that. Boom. And I also want to use this to add the yumminess to these other clouds. So we put the bright yumminess on and then you just lightly, gingerly tap it down, leaving that vibrancy there, but just tapping it within that cloud. Because some of them, when you've done them, don't worry about it. Go, you're doing all your clouds. They look a bit pale. That's what the yumminess does. It brings the paleness out of those clouds. So I've got my 
brush built up there. Yumminess. Set it on there and lightly. There we go. Beautiful. Give dimension to your clouds. And maybe just a little bit over here. Where are we? Just some under there. Oh, and some up there. And that'll do it, I think, because I can keep carrying on like this until the cows come home. There. Just lightly. So that's pretty much all I want for the sky. Now I'm going to dry all this area here where I'm going to bring the lower half onto it. And the lower half isn't going to be as wet as the top with all that retarda and the craft paint, okay? It's going to be a lot more. It's just going to be the paint itself out of the tube. Now we're going to map in the bottom half of the painting. So I've got some black gesso here. It's just like a matte black paint. And uh, I've got two brushes to paint it on with. I've got my flat filbert and my flat brush. And why have I got a flat filbert and a flat brush? Well, this is to get the nitty gritties at the top. And the flat brush is to get the bulk of it in. So we'll put that there. I don't want too much in here. Ease up tiger easy tiger and we'll get the top mapped in just where our tree canopy is going to be so we'll go just over the color a bit so i want to there we go it doesn't matter if you get air in between bits having bits of yellow showing through look at that see that's artistic that's beautiful that's what you want natural mistakes is art i feel get some air in there Beautiful, just little bits of air. It's distant, so you don't want it too detailed, but you don't want it too boring and bland as well. And I love using this. You might have your favorite brush for tree canopies and distant shrubs and whatnot. So I'm just using this. There we go. Now I'm gonna pick up the other flat brush and get our horizon on somewhere around there and then we can just map all this in now with the big brush with the big let's get it done brush okay I've got some low tack tape there just get that line in there confidently there we go I can come down from it pull that off There we go. I'm just wetting the brush a little bit because if you'll notice, it's very dry on the canvas. Now I've wet it. Look at it move. Beautiful. Now this will, if you don't have black gesso, just use whatever black you got for now. But learn to get different mediums for your art journey if you're going to do a lot of different stuff. Follow on people like me or others that love showing you how to do different things. So yeah, if you don't have black gesso, just use black for now. Or mix up a dark, very dark green with brown and green and blue or something. All right, now I'm gonna dry that. All right, everything's dry. You can see where it's heading. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just grabbing some white in a liner brush and I'm getting it a bit wet. Okay, and I'll just add the lightning first before we start putting the trees on because this will be behind the trees. So with lightning, you don't wanna try and overdo it lightning would be a good thing to practice now on my display on my reference picture i'm probably probably going to go pretty much from there so i want to get a blob start your brush within the cloud and then just jingle jangly nice skinny twist as you go let it just go all lightningly over the place like that and bang that's one done whether you can see that or not yeah you can Okay, that's one lightning bolt. That's all you need. They don't have to be massive and fat. And um, we'll probably do one arcing off him probably about here. Now don't water your paint down too much, otherwise it'll go a bit opaque. <laughs> I'll just find this. I could have done this with my um, paint pen. So I'm coming from this end now. 
just so I can control his wiggles. There we go. And that's within that cloud there. Just coming down into the horizon. Boom. Now this is where we're gonna add the greens. Now it's your painting. You use what greens you like. I've got forest green, yellow green. I've got some black, sorry. <laughs> and I've got some cadmium yellow. That's gonna lighten up the forest green and this is gonna highlight the job. And I've just found another green there. It's antique green if you must know. But you know, I'm gonna try and see how that looks within the mix as well. So I wanna get just a little bit of this brightened up so it's gonna stand out on top of the black there. So I'm gonna wet the brush and get me forest green the shade that I want, which is pretty much, come on, come on. That's cadmium yellow light I'm mixing with that. Now I've put some tape here because I wanna know where my horizon line is. Let's say that's the horizon line. I wanna leave at least, or here, black with under that to give it depth, okay? You'll see what I mean if you're not quite sure. Now start from here, and we'll just start, go over that black a little bit. There we go. And then start dancing in your canopies. Now see what that did, it lifted that black off. I know it didn't, I just had a big blob of yellow on my brush, it wasn't. Now leave blacks within. So I'm just umbrellaing down blacks within. Go a little bit above that black. <laughs> now my tape falls off, it's a really weak tape that one. It was like about five bucks for a big half a dozen pack, no wonder. I'll put that there, that's just a guide to show me where my line is. And I want to have dark underneath the bottom of this foliage. So we'll come down here. Big pockets of darks there. And that yellow green is going to highlight these trees. Try not to get too many uniform patterns if you can, like I'm trying to break it up a bit. Now I've dried that. It's important you dry it so your next colour doesn't mud up. And we're going to grab our yellow green now. Now this yellow green also, if it's a little bit on the dark side that you feel, you can always tint it up with some of that cad yellow light as well. Let's just see how it's going to look. Okay, so we'll get... Is it gonna stand out? Yes, it is. It's standing out enough. Because then I will highlight it just where I want the actual light hitting it. I'm coming down in bands and waves and like that, see? Try and mix it up and... Now some of this needs to just overlap the dark as well. Leave darks in there. Come over the dark a bit. And always remember when you're doing this, if you've gone too bright and blobby, bring the other colour back and sink it back down again, okay? I don't know what kind of trees these are, but they look like trees anyway. Bit over the dark there, a little bit over the dark there, there we go. Now that's the colour, now I'm going to highlight it. I'll add the yellow with that yellow green just to highlight that colour and you'll see what it does. But I've got to dry this first. So we'll grab some of that yellow and start highlighting that yellow green. There we go. That's bright enough I feel 
and I just want to hover over that canopy that I've just painted on there just here and there just so it's like the lights bouncing off it don't want to go and stamp the whole lot now this has been dried now over here there's the Sun let's get that on there a bit better Hit the tops and dance down. Hit the tops and dance down. There'll be pockets of shade within this canopy. Hit the top. Dance down some of it. Not a, not. Don't go crazy. Hold yourself back from going crazy. Here, we'll bring this in front of that bunch there, and just highlight that down there. See, we've set that back just with the subtleness of this highlighted green. Some up there, and we'll do the same again. Bring that in front of there. Some over the black. And here. And we've just gone here and there. That'll do it. Okay, that's done. Now, before I pull the tape off, I want to sink this back. I've dried that. So I'm going to get this yellow and red, try and get this color here. We'll grab a little bit of red over here and some of the Indian yellow that's left. There we go. We don't want it too strong. That's it. I'm just going to, is that the color I'm looking for? Yep, that'll do. Now I'm just going to contaminate this glaze here. This is just some glaze. This will be transparent. Now, I'm, I'm hoping this, I didn't even practice this before I tried it, so let's see how we go on camera and see how this is going to work, all right? And I pretty much want to come from here and sink all those trees back within the sky like that. Now, I'm going to brush those big heavy marks out of it. Come across the sky there. And let me just see how that works. Now, I might need to fix up the um, lightning. We'll see how we go. I'm just scratching it in there like that. There we go. And that's just put atmosphere between you and them because they're so far away. And if you feel, oh, I would not have liked to have done that, well, just don't do it. Now, we'll pull the tape off. Everything can be dried. And then we'll do the foreground. I'm just going to grab my little scrumbling brush, pick up some of the black, as we can find the black within here and put it back. Because we need this to sit it on top of the field properly when I get this field in here. Just like that. I think that'll do it. Now we're going to paint in the field of grass. So I've got my flat two inch again and the grass is pretty much the forest green. I've got water down here and some more of that cad yellow light just to make it pop. There we go. And then we can highlight this with the yellow green accordingly. I've just put a bit of tape there to keep my horizon line. I'll get that up there first. Okay. Now I'm going to start bringing all this down. Bring it lineal across the page. Paint it all in there. Wet your brush just a little bit so it's going to move better. And under your trees that you've got there, leave some dark bits there. Under these trees here, leave your black so doesn't have to be a dead straight line but within under there you want to leave that black just like that you can grab a different brush to get in there you don't have to try and do everything with a big brush how's that looking yeah that's all right I'm just making sure 
that under here is good. I should pick up a smaller brush, but I'm just too lazy. There we go. Now we'll dry this. Okay, I've washed that brush. I'm going to pick up some yellow green and we'll start mapping in the rest of our grass field. So I'll put that tape back again just so as I don't hurt it. Where are you? Just about there somewhere. Yeah, that'll do. Just so as I can come in and... Pull this across your lawn, your field, whatever. Get your brush a little bit wet, it's not quite wet enough then. There we go. And up there above, under the trees there. We'll go there again. Because that first bit of green was just the foundation for all of this. This is our field. It'll look quite nice once that tape's out of the way and not spoiling your view so much. So we pretty much grab that and put it with that yellow green there. Get on both sides of your brush. And we just want this in certain areas, not all over it like we just did with the yellow green. So first I'll come over here and move the tape. Did I dry that? I better dry it first. Okay, get some of this hitting the grass there. I want a nice bright value coming across the field there, just like that. Mainly on the horizon line there where the sun is. Blend it in. Now if you feel you've gone too blobby again, get the darker colour and put it back. I'm going to remove this tape now, just so we can see what's happening there. All right, that's done. Let's put an autograph on there. And be sure to check out the links in the description below. Check out my merchandise there. Become a member of my art group. You can share your paintings there with me and everybody else in the group. Uh, you can become a patron, support my content by becoming a patron of mine. And there's uh, also paintings available for sale. All my paintings are for sale. All right, let's just get this signature done. Put Steve's little four paw print there. There we go. Okay, let's put a frame on this and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've just got a, an open field there. We've got a lightning crackling in the distant sky, a bit of the sun going down in the afternoon. The blue could have been a little bit darker, but just remember, you can do that, all right? So be sure to check out the links in the description below, uh, share, like and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing here, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't, be damn certain to tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.